Hello and welcome to week two of the Whiskey Tangent Podcast's Whiskey Madness 2021, The Road to the Final Pour, a four-week-long blind tasting tournament featuring 16 whiskeys from around the world. I'm Scott, and joining me as always is Ed. Hey! And kindly filling in for Anders, who isn't feeling well today, Gabe. Hello again. Hey! Last week in round one of the American Brackets, we bore witness to two stunning upsets of both number one seeds, with the second and fourth seeds of the Bourbons in the Rise moving on to square off in next week's round two tastings. But this week, we're doing round one of the International Whiskey Brackets, and Ed's here to divulge which eight whiskeys from which six foreign nations have made the pilgrimage to the mecca of whiskey competitions, the resplendent Whiskey Tangent Arena, to pray... <laughs> To their whiskey gods in the hopes of making their whiskey dreams come true. Well, first of all, I heard that Anders might be secretly on assignment with NASA, working with the Mars <laughs> rover to determine what compounds are on Mars would go best in a Manhattan oh, or an old-fashioned. Well, he is a man of Ooh. science. He's a mixologist, yeah. and, and his talents are so well sought after in the world, <laughs> even in space. Even by NASA. Even by NASA. So that's not confirmed. I'm not saying that's exactly, nor would I be allowed to say that exactly if it was true. Am I going to have to beep all this out? Which it may not be. No, we're going to let it through I haven't okay. really said anything. This right. is all allegedly. It's allegedly. There's no he, truth behind this. Right. He may may or may not be working with NASA to find compounds on Mars that would oh go God. well in a Manhattan. Okay. <laughs> Possibly. Um, the international bracket has some people that we're familiar with and some complete newcomers that we have yet to ever taste. Yes. So in the Scotch-Irish bracket, we have the Glamouragi 10-year, the original. Uh, Glamouragi, by the way, is the best-selling single malt scotch in Scotland. Mm. It's the scotch that Scots like to drink. Wow. And this Scott, too. <laughs> I do like it. It's going to be going against a whiskey that we featured on here, the Sexton Irish Whiskey, mm. which is our fourth seed in this bracket. Right. And then in the uh, bottom half of the bracket, the two verse three, we're going to have Teeling's Small Batch Irish Whiskey against the ever-popular, entry-level, delicious monkey shoulder Scotch Whiskey. And Gabe, do you have any uh, immediate thoughts on this bracket? I mean, I will mention that Gabe's the one that introduced Scott and I to the Teelings, and we really have come to enjoy it. Yeah, that was episode 11? Yeah, I'm very well familiar with the Teelings since I've put together an Irish Infinity bottle. Yeah. I've got to know some Irish whiskeys, and I'm telling you, Teelings stands out far and above as one of the best I've tried. Yeah, the small batch and the rum finish. And the 92 proof, which separates it from the majority of Irish whiskeys. It does. And and Gabe, you were also here for our Sexton show. And we tasted that. We all really loved it. Sexton's going against Glenn Morangi. That's an interesting matchup. It is. Um, last year, we did separate Scotch and Irish, so, right. but we combined them this year to get the world bracket The world bracket in. Yeah. Right. Four whiskeys, of which only one has actually been tried on the podcast yeah. by us. Yeah. The top seed in this bracket is the Nika Coffee Grain Whiskey right. from Japan. Mm. It'll be going against the fourth ranked Amrit Single Malt from India. The Dark Horse. Oh. Yes. And then in the two and three bracket, we have Crown Royal XO from Canada going against Bren, a single malt whiskey from France. Yeah, I'm thrilled that there's going to be three whiskeys in that world bracket that we haven't tasted haven't taste ever. It's very exciting. And the XO, which I think I've only really tasted once. And it's completely different than what I was expecting everything else in the bracket to be. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's some people who have criticized the selection committee, and Lord knows <laughs> the selection committee gets criticized that yeah. the flavor profile of the XO Crown World would have been better in the above bracket of the Scotch and Irish. It would have mingled Possibly. more with them. Possibly. And the selection committee told everybody well you know get your own podcast get your and own then, bracket. In your own brackets and then you do your own tasting at home and then you tell us what you think but to us it's going to be like a control group because we know that one and crown royal is the second most popular selling whiskey in america yeah. gabe have you had any of those whiskeys in the world bracket i uh, do not believe so yeah right so if you i have to break some ties today it'll be also interesting for you right and gabe did a nice job last night drinking as much whiskey as possible you know because we put them on the spot so we had to go into deep 
keep training. So last night he had like <laughs> six or seven drinks of whiskey just to get himself up to par. And he might have overdone it because he's a little sluggish right now. Yeah, I, I went to a tasting last night and uh, some different expressions we tried. Yeah. That what I was never... the best thing that came out of the tasting? Tell the people at home. Uh, I actually tried the, the Balconies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Texas, yeah, uh, the Texas one, sure. It was very good. Okay, I've never had it. It was number seventeen in the Whiskey Advocates uh, Winter Top Twenty, and right, for, so for like, like a, a mid thirties bottle, it was oh, that's not bad. Very good. Yeah. Well, all right, all right. Gabe will move over to the preparation area and pour the whiskeys for us. We'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. Before we get to the tastings, I'm going to read the rules because Anders isn't here and the rules are slightly different. Actually, just switch out Anders for Gabe, but I'm going to read them anyway. (laughs) Uh, Ed and I each have two glasses marked A and B into which Gabe will pour the whiskeys. We'll taste them, write down our choices, and hand them back to Gabe who will reveal the results. If Ed and I agree, that whiskey is the winner. If Ed and I disagree, then Ed will pour Gabe A and B to break the tie. No pressure, Gabe. (laughs) First up, we have Teeling's Irish Small Batch and Monkey Shoulder Scotch. So, as we mentioned, Teeling's first made an appearance on um, episode 11, which was our rum finished. Yeah, alongside um, Angels and the Rye mm. and Tullamore Dew. Right. So, we right, had a couple of Irish whiskeys that day. Yeah. All and this good. one stood out. I mean, did. I, I literally that day tried to drink as much of Gabe's Teeling's if I could before he left with it. <laughs> no I, I remember thinking I want to drink as much as I can because <laughs> Gabe says no surprise. I didn't know how rare it was. So I just kept taking it to the head. <laughs> literally, it was like taking it out of my hand as, as he tried to put the cap on and get out the door. I was like, <laughs> he was dragging me down the hallway of the apartment. But um, so the nose, you're going to get some dried fruit. Some malt. They say a banana nut muffin, some caramel. Mm. But I mean, banana nut muffins are very specific taste. Yeah, I, it, that is. I don't remember I don't that. Remember that. I remember the brown sugar. We'll I, try to taste yeah, it. So let's, we'll try. see what happens. It's a, listen, overall, Teeling's with its 92 proof and the way we like higher proof whiskeys, <laughs> it can definitely hold its own and has a legit chance to take the bracket. This is a nice sippable whiskey, mm. Scott, and will work well in cocktails Agreed. or even the occasional hot toddy. Ooh. Oh. Hello. Hello. Oh, my. (laughs) So it's going against Monkey Shoulder. Right. So Monkey Shoulder, it is a blended malt scotch, 100% malted barley. Its proof is 86. So uh, like you said, a little bit lower than the Teeling's. There's no age statement, but it has to be at least three years to be called a scotch. The distiller, bottle, or owner, importer, all of those is the William Grant & Sons from Bells Hill, Scotland. Fun facts, we featured this on episode 23, which was our first and to date only Scotch episode, as well as our first episode of the COVID era, where it compared more or less favorably to the Glenmorangie tenure. It was originally a blend of 27 casks of single malts from Glenfiddich, Balvany, and Kinnanvie, but today could also be from other William Grant & Sons distilleries. The name Monkey Shoulder comes from a physical ailment that resulted from the practice of floor malting, in which hydrated barley grains are spread out on the floor of a large room to germinate. In order to prevent the barley from tanking, Angling itself into an unimaginable mat, it must be turned by hand twice a day, every day, until it's ready for drying. The men who did this would experience a strain injury in their shoulders, causing their arms to hang down a bit like a monkey's. Monkey! 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 The tasting notes for monkey shoulder are complex fruit, malt, licorice, spice, with notes of juicy fruit gum and grassy undertones. This was a great matchup because, as Ed alluded to before, there are two very easy drinking whiskeys. Very easy. Both are blends, both primarily barley, and both finished. Monkey Shoulder in the Sherry and Teeling's in the Rum. So there's a difference in proof, but my money is actually on the finishing yeah. and which flavors provided by the Sherry casks versus the Rum. Yeah, if this was a 92 versus an 80, I think the proof would be a bigger issue. Right. This is an 86, and depending on how old and how it's finished and how smooth it is, it's going to make a difference. Right. Gabe, what do you think? 
I'm curious to see is you, do you think the fact that one's an Irish and one's a Scotch is going to influence your decision making at all? It might because the Irish whiskeys tend to be a little bit smoother from the triple distillation, but um, I don't know. Monkey Shoulder is very smooth also. We like complex uh, flavors as well. I think this is going to be an incredibly close matchup. Yeah, I do too. And like people say, well, can't you tell the difference between an Irish whiskey and a Scotch? Well, of course. No, of course, normally you can, but that's not what this is about. It's about we approach this with a different mindset. It's not we're not trying to figure it out or trick ourselves. We focus on how is it tasting in our mouth as we sip it. Because the reality is, I honestly don't care who wins. No. It's not like I'm going to go be pulling exactly. for the uh, monkey shoulder or the tealing. They're not sponsoring us or anything. Right, right. But, <laughs> sure, if, you do but want, if you do want to sponsor us, <laughs> either one can win the Whiskey Madness if the price is right. <laughs> now, do you, do you think your your limited knowledge of scotches, as you said, you've only done one scotch yes. podcast well, so but far. But we're equally unknowledgeable, so I feel like that's a plus. <laughs> okay. But you've had more Irish, obviously. But, sure. And sure. I am also very uneducated with the scotch. Scotches. I'm trying to dabble right. in more, but right, right. So uh, I guess the only thing we'd have to do now is taste them. Taste what? Taste the whiskeys. <laughs> whiskeys. What <Yeah>. whiskeys? <laughs> I saw you pour them. <laughs> yeah, you are, a, you've already poured them. Give us glass A, no, damn it. We've Just been kidding. waiting long enough. Now handing over glass A. Oh wait, no. Now you've you've already switched things up. This is Ed's glass. It says Ed on it. Oh, I'm sorry. Just tried to give me COVID. <laughs> Fuck you. Right. Well, we're, <laughs> we're we're trying not to lick out of each other's glasses. Glasses. Thanks, COVID. <laughs> they are now hmm. nosing the glass. Hmm. I don't know. I, I haven't been able to tell anything from the nose. No. it's uh, They're sniffing. It's, uh, They're evaluating. Ooh, I, I mean, it's so, it's so nice. It, it could be either one because I'm getting that malty spiciness to it. Now I've now handed over glass B. Mm-hmm. Oh, a little bit more fruity smell on the B. I didn't get much on the A, but the yeah, B, B, had, this B has a better nose. B had more, yes. Now they're nosing B, and they, they seem thoroughly confused. Oh, my God. I mean, their tastes are really similar. Oh, I can't similar. believe how similar they are. They really are. They're now tasting them. <laughs> give, give your running commentary. I can't believe how close the finishes are. Mm. Ed can't believe how close the finishes are. <laughs> <laughs> and I, they're still thoroughly confused. They're evaluating. They're tasting more. I mean, one's a little mm, less, I mean, slightly less flavorful than the other one, and that could be the proofing. Oh, the proofing is not that much different than one or the other. Correct. Only what? Five points? Six points? Mm -hmm. Six Six. degrees of separation. Okay. Literally. It's a shame one of these has to lose. Ed is now finished. Yeah, they're both quite good. Wow. Both glasses. Not surprisingly. That's really tough. They They are grabbing their markers to make their selections. Ed is handing me his selection. Hmm. Okay. That was tough. That was tough. That was tough as anything that we had last week. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. The result? Yeah. Both Ed and Scott picked B. Which was? What do you think it was? Feelings? I think it's a monkey shoulder. It's the monkey shoulder. Oh, wow. <laughs> it faked me out. See, everybody? Right. I honestly thought I was picking the, the tealings. Wow, that's so funny. So we picked the monkey shoulder. Right. That's oh. amazing. That's amazing. The monkey shoulder, to me, the bee, had a little bit more so little. extra flavor. And Just finish. a little bit more extra flavor and a little bit longer finish, and that's why I chose and it. And they both had great flavor. Both had great palate. Both had good mouthfeel. Both had a good finish. But the monkey shoulder evidently has a little bit of a stronger finish, and it won the day. I'm a little surprised, honestly. I, 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 I am, too. The lower know. proof one had the more flavor. Yeah, and how much you, you guys nutted over the tealings. Yes. <laughs> right. and, uh, I still how much do. you loved it. Oh, I still do. I still do. I mean, I love both of them. I really did. And it was a very difficult decision. But I'll be honest with you, though. I okay. mean, uh-huh. this is why we do this, too. Yeah. The Teelings has been progressively getting more and more expensive. It's upwards of 45 46 yeah, People 47 are discovering dollars. it now, yeah. yeah. Monkey Shoulder is $10 less. Yeah. For $10 well, less, why would I not get Monkey Shoulder, mm-hmm. right? If yeah. they're that close to each other. So Quite good. here we are. Take a break. We'll come back to the next one, which will be the uh, Glen Moraji and the Sexton. All right.
Okay, so we're back, and the next matchup is Glenn Morangy tenure versus the Sexton. Ed? Well, first of all, we featured Glenn Morangy on episode... Mm, 23. And, uh... <laughs> You're like a savant. I just called up. <laughs> no, I mean... It, it was the same one as Monkey Shoulder. Right. That's, yeah. oh. <laughs> it's some serious tasty stuff, as I remember. Um, yeah, yeah. The tenure, probably one of the best bargains in the whiskey industry, especially the Scotch market. It's the single malt equivalent of Chev's Regal. Okay. As far as the, the price for a nice 12 year. Right. And the popularity. Yeah. Yeah. This is the 10 year. As I said early, Glamourage is the best selling single malt scotch in Scotland. Mm. I mean, that's that's all you need to know right there. Glamourage started as basically a farm distillery in 1843 and all the way up until 2004 when it was sold for 300 million pounds to Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy. No. Oh. Uh, I guess where you can get a nice overpriced handbag and a case of whiskey at the same time. Right, you get a Glen Morangy in the handbag. That's nice. Yeah, That's nice. it's really nice. It costs like $1,000. Um, <laughs> but actually, $36 for a delicious 10-year-old single malt whiskey. Yeah, and, um, yeah. It's got an 86 proof to it. Hmm. So once you take a sip of this stuff, you're supposed to have a nice surge of orchid, fruit, and malt. Some patches of honey and graham cracker Ooh. are sewn in with Ooh. a sweet buttery thread. Buttery. Whoa. Sewn in with a sweet buttery thread. You, you are yeah, selling nice. this very beautifully. That's, was that this the is whiskey jug? Yeah, whiskey jug. Don't give me credit. Oh, okay. Oh, been fuck doing you, this, Ed. They've been for me. <laughs> bitch. Random belligerence. <laughs> whiskey jug edition. I, I, no, I know what. Just to stop away for Andre. <laughs> Never mind. Stop. Cut, sh- cut the lights out. Where's Agent? Fred! Damn it! I can't work like this! I told you I got that shot! I was to fucking work! <laughs> We're sorry. We're experiencing technical difficulties. Please wait while Ed reads his contract. All right, my agent just showed me the contract where I have to finish the episode, so... <laughs> Somebody's butt hurt. So the, um, the finish is <clears throat> medium long and filled with rich tropical fruit. <laughs> <laughs> You're used to medium long. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Woo. Butt hurt with the medium long. <laughs> All right. No, We're back. So, the, it says here for Whiskey Jug, it's smooth, <laughs> almost refreshing feeling going down, just like Gabe. Woo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're even. <laughs> Holy Ooh. shit. What is happening? What happened? <laughs> what just happened there? Well... We're waiting. Are you done? <laughs> I'm, done. I'm done. All right. I'm done. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> and then we have the other bottle. Right. That other bottle. So, uh, Glenmore and Tenure is going up against the Sexton. Mm. It is a sherry finished Irish whiskey, 100% malted barley. Its proof is 80. So, again, we have a six degree difference in proof. Where's uh, Kevin Bacon yeah. when you need him? That's it. right. <laughs> yeah, there's no age statement, but the Master Blender has said that it's at least four years. The distiller bottler is Old Bushmills Distillery in Bushmills, Northern Ireland. The owner and importer is Proximo Spirits of Jersey City, New Jersey. Wow. They're the owners of Bushmills. Do you guys know that? Do a now. New Jersey company owns Bushmills. No, that's not possible. No, yep, it's true. Wow. Yep. We featured this on a quick taste short that we released yep. last summer, as we said earlier. Um, Gabe was here for that. And it was our very first solicited whiskey, as we also mentioned. They sent us this cool-ass bottle, dark glass, hexagonal shape with ornate steampunk sort of labeling. It was created by Alex Thomas, one of the few female master blenders in the industry, triple distilled in copper Mm. pot stills, then aged in former Oloroso sherry casks from Jerez de la Frontera, Spain. (laughs) <laughs> the shape of the bottle mimics the Giant's Causeway, a rock formation of interlocking hexagonal basalt columns located near where the whiskey is created in County Antrim on the northeastern coast of Northern Ireland. The tasting notes are sherry, malt, cocoa, toffee, strawberry jam, cinnamon, nuts, dried apricot, and mint. Wow. That yeah. is a mouthful. Wow. It is. Uh, this is another great matchup of Scotch versus Irish. I really like the way that the selection committee ranked these. So we have an Irish and a Scotch going up against each other. Uh, this time, though, not only is the finishing different, Sexton and Sherry finished and Glen Moringy isn't finished at all, but the age is vastly different. So it's like four plus with the Sexton, but it's 10 year, obviously, with the Glen Moringy. 
So maybe the scotch will have some deeper character to it, but I wouldn't count out the smooth and surprising sweetness of this Irish whiskey. Right. It doesn't have a, an extra finishing step like we had last time. Correct. So we're going to try them right now and see what they're about. Gabe's head has disappeared behind the... Yeah, it's creepy. B- behind the uh, shield. For all I know, he's spit in both my glasses. Like, <laughs> I, Fred! I'm blindly, Fred! I'm blindly nosing so you can't see Where's what I'm doing. Head? <laughs> Where's my agent? <laughs> right, I'm on the protest for the rest of this episode. All Let's right, go. All right. Hand us, G- hand give us me my goddamn glasses. Oh, wow. Gabe is now handing over the A's. Mm. Hmm. Again, not much on A. No. The nose is benign. A little bit I mean, of definitely, little alcohol and some sweetness. Definitely smells some malt. Scott and Ned yep. are currently nosing the first A glass. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take a taste. Scott and Ed are currently tasting the A glass. <laughs> mm, sharp. Scott just said the A is sharp. <laughs> it just told me to stop. You're not a steno- what, what, what is this, stenographer? Yeah, <laughs> you're, not, you're not a court stenographer here. Not, like, we have it recorded. We don't need to record it. <laughs> All right. Would you like me to go back over the last minutes? Be please. <laughs> no. I am now handing over Glassby. Thank you. You're welcome. So much. Mm. This one's darker. Ed thinks it's darker. Just, Scott concurs. <laughs> Scott concurs. You're just going to make him cut each of them out. You know right. I'm going to cut all of this out. Do you know how much work no. you're creating for him? <laughs> it's fun. It's like one of those family guy things where it's funny and then it's not funny and then it's funny again. Ooh. Okay. So that's a bit smoother with a little bit more flavor. A was really sharp. It like really hit me with that spice. They're different, but yet there's some similarities in the beginning. I don't know which is which. I, I, I can't even I speculate. I do not know which is which. Well, in, in my nosing before I handed them over, they were very similar. Okay. I'm getting a little bit more off the A now, whereas I didn't previous, but B has much more of a pronounced nose, I think. I, I've made my decision. Ed is still pondering the, the two choices. He is really torn, and he's just to make sure he's finishing both, which is not surprising at all. <laughs> you were going to say it was surprising, but no. No, because no, he's not... No one to leave no, I, at, uh, glasses. I, look, look, I still have plenty of mine. That's because you're a lightweight. <laughs> Ed has handed me his choice. It was, again, really, really tough. I, it was close. It was I, close. I, I, I might even pick him in reverse tomorrow, but this is what I felt today. Yeah, yeah. All right. We have a winner. Ooh, oh, nice. Well, you both chose B. Okay, and B was? The Sexton. No, it was not. Wow. No, it was not. Yes. Wow. Holy cow. I, am, I was almost convinced what? it was going to be the Glamourage. What? 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 Okay. Wow. I, Raise I the roof, it. bitches. Oh, my God. The fourth seed. The second fourth seed oh my in God. the tournament. Again. Has upset the number one. Holy crap. What is going on here? And it was close, everybody. The Sexton, like the monkey shoulder last time, was the lower proof one, but still, to me, had more flavor in it than the higher proof expression that it was going up against. Well, it goes to show you proofing is in everything. I mean, it's true. This is incredible for 80 proof. Incredible. Yeah. And, and once again, they're both, for the price ranges, bargains. Bargains. But I'm talking about the Sexton's usually about $26. And the Glen Roddy's about $10 more than that and it's still a bargain there they have a leader expression right over the liquor store right near me yeah and they're selling it for like 20 for the leader right because i i guess maybe it's not a big seller maybe people don't know about it so they're yeah. trying to get rid of it it's unbelievable it's amazing what people don't know the sexton irish whiskey if you've never tried it and you're tuning in with us for the money you know just skip your bush mills for a week even your tell do which i love and give it a try. Absolutely. This Holy is God. amazing. I was so ready for you to say Glamorant. I know I, I was too. I sure that I chose Glamorant. I was too. So we had a lot of experience with this bracket. We have pretty much tasted them all. We did. Now we're going into the unknown. Yeah. We thought we knew what we were going to do here and this surprised us. So we're about to go into the world bracket. Yeah. When we come back, we're going to be tasting the Nika Coffee mm. versus the Indian Amrit and the Crown Royal XO versus the Bren from France. Yeah. You thought we had fun now? The real fun (laughs) begins now. Just wait.
All right, so we are back with the world bracket. Woo! First up, Crown Royal XO versus Bren. Ed? Right, well, so Crown Royal, of course, distilled in Canada. Um, aged in barrels for at least three years. Um, Canadian whiskeys are, are blends of corn, barley, and rye. Heavy rye a lot of times, mm. which are... You know, distilled and matured separately. Traditionally, Canadian whiskey is called a rye. Although there's no minimum percentage of rye grain whiskey required. Which is basically, right. Canadian whiskey is a fucking shit show, to yeah. be perfectly honest. They don't have rules. And um, well, it's well, one reason we haven't really delved into it deeply. But of Canadian whiskey, Crown Royal is, as I mentioned earlier, the second most popular brand in the United States. Yeah, it's crazy. The tr- regular Crown Royal. The XO is about $45. Yeah. It's finished in X cognac barrels. When we featured it on our episode, we kind of speculated that it's probably Hennessy yeah. barrels. Right. Episode 21. Sweet with a low-key caramel oak nutmeg that will be familiar to all Crown Royal drinkers. However, it's kind of like a dash of orange bitters and the mouth it starts to hmm. like starts out like Crown Royal. And then there's like a finish of toffee and some chocolate charred oak, some candied notes. Hmm. It gives way to, to more oak and dried apricot, some butterscotch, rye spice and cloves. Oh, it's a pleasant, easy drinking, although the effect of the cognac cast may be less pronounced than you can expect. So that's going up against Bren, our first French single malt whiskey, 100% malted barley, proof of 80. No right. age statement, but um, it's purported to be between six and seven years on average. The distiller bottler is actually undisclosed. Its importer is Local Infusions LLC of Wilmington, Delaware. The really? owner is Allison Park, who is a former ballerina turned whiskey entrepreneur in partnership with a third generation farm distillery located in cognac france she created bren the only organic french single malt in existence which they call seed to spirit whiskey using two types of heirloom barley and a proprietary strain of yeast the whiskey is aged in french limousin oak finished in ex cognac casks and proofed with water from the charon river all of which is so fucking french it's ridiculous we oui. At this point, maybe you're thinking that France and whiskey really don't go together, but you'd be wrong. <laughs> the French actually drink more whiskey per capita than any other country. Sacre bleu. And currently have 60 whiskey distilleries that's in operation. A, that's a bullshit stuff. Fuck France. There's no way they drink as much whiskey as Scotland. Per does. capita. They're actually top three when you do overall. Mm. Uh, tasting notes for the Bren. Light banana. Here we go again with the banana, which we have yet to taste. Yep. Sweet fruits, anise, butter, vanilla, with a hint of oak and dark spice. Love anise. <laughs> I was going to just go right over that, but nope. no, you got to bring us back No, you can't anise. go over the anise. You got to stop and, and really enjoy stop it. Stop and sniff the anise. You got to anise. Anise. linger there for a while. Bring your nose into it. Just put your nose right in there. All right. So what's fun about this matchup is that we have France going against Canada. Right. Two countries, of course, who have a long and somewhat contentious history. Right. An entire French-speaking province in Quebec. So this should make our Canadian fans happy. These two whiskeys are also kind of similar in that they have the same proof, and they're both finished in cognac casks. So possibly the difference here is that it will come down to the grain, the French barley versus the Canadian rye. And perhaps an additional significant factor is that Bran is a single barrel expression. All right. Well, I'm going to put a little bit of more weight on this. If the Bren wins, I'm going to say that Quebec gets to break off and be its own country. <laughs> All right. That's what we're putting on this. And if, wow. if Crown Royal wins, then they just got to chill out and stop complaining. I, did, I didn't know we had geopolitical we had that much power. Over. So whoever's <laughs> going to, if Scott and I both pick the Bren, then Quebec province will become its own country. <laughs> And, and to the much joy of everybody else around it. <laughs> it will actually lift up out of Canada right. and go and sit itself into the Atlantic Ocean. Right, like the end of the last Indiana Jones movie. <laughs> that horrible, <laughs> terrible end. Oh, God, the Crystal Skull one? Yeah, the, where, oh, Jesus. Where, where the mountain was... spaceship just took off and flew away. Fucking terrible. Well, that's what Quebec will do. It'll, just, it'll lift off in the air and just fly back <laughs> to France. I think Quebec is bigger than France, too. Yeah, that's the that'll, make it, it. that'll make it awkward. Yeah. Oh, you awkward. Know, it, could, it could just sit right in the channel and plug it up and just take the whole channel and just crash right into the side of England. <laughs> right, so there's no English Channel anymore. Right, you can right. walk right it's from so London easy. to Paris. So actually, we're doing the European uh, Union a favor. A favor. Yeah. By picking Bren. <laughs> Gabe, do you have any thoughts on this crazy bracket? You have never had any of these no, whiskeys. What are you expecting out of this? Do you have any idea? I don't want to give anything away. I've been nosing them while you've been giving the introductions. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, they are very distinct. Okay. And very different than... The, than and I have my idea of who is going to win, but I won't, okay. Okay. I won't disclose. That's interesting to see. All right. Here's A, and I will hold back the commentary because okay. I know that's annoying. <laughs> Wow, this nose is nothing like Ooh. we've had so far of any of them. I mean, ever. 
Now I smell the banana. It's very distinctive, isn't it? Like a, a ripe banana peel. That's exactly what it smells like to me. That's what I was getting. Incredible. Even overripe, perhaps. Yes, yes. Like even like it t- makes a, a turn. It's not quite wow. good, in fact. Mm. The color here is is different. B is much darker. Oh my God. The taste of A is also banana. Holy shit. Ooh, that B is nice though too. I think I know where you guys are heading, but I'll I'll leave it. This is so much fun. I, I mean, think, I think I know what A is. Uh, yeah, A is definitely the brand. Yeah, and definitely B is the brand the because I've never tasted anything like this in my life. No. So. Holy crap! A is sweet. It's banana bread. That's what it tastes like. <laughs> Holy crap! That, that's what I was getting at big time on the nose, and yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm dying to try it just yeah. a little bit. Dave, it's I'm something need, very I'm different. A little more of the A. Thank you. You're welcome. And you, Scott? No, no, I still plenty. Which one do there, I like better now? There is an off-putting finish to the brand. I will say that. There, you know what? I, it's not the finish that puts me off. It's the nose that puts me off. Well, wow. like it's very it's, sweet. It's very sweet. It's very banana. And then right at the end of when you're sniffing it, it's like overripe. The banana. complexity in the beginning and the taste in the beginning is so intriguing that I'm not saying that the finish is necessarily a deal breaker. Yeah. I'm not there yet. I'm just recognizing I don't really love the way it finishes. I got to go back and kind of check that out. It's a really interesting whiskey. I, it's this better is, than I expected. Oh, yeah. This is great. Really? It really is great. I really like the initial flavor of A. It's very good. But it's then so it, different from any other whiskey that I've had. In comparison to the taste of B, it's better. But I think the nose of B and the finish of B mm. is a little better than A. I'm going to have to have you uh, mix okay. up the glasses for me. I'm going to close my eyes and you hand them to me. Yes. And then I'm just going to say the first or second. And yes. then you can mark my scorecard for me and hand it to Kate. Sure. The second one. Just a real quick yep. snap decision. I can't. I can't do it any other way. They're really close. Okay, gentlemen. Yes. We have our first tie. All oh, right. Wow. Are you kidding? No, I, I picked the Crown Royal, and you picked the. Uh, Did I pick the Bren? You, you picked the Bren. <laughs> All right. So Ed and Gabe are going to switch places, and Gabe gets to break his first tie. Overtime. Ed has poured glass A and B. Yes. For Gabe to break the tie between Crown Royal XO and Bren French Single Malt. Okay, so here's glass A and here's glass B. I'm just going to taste. I'm not going to sniff. Oh, no. Sniff, do everything you want. Well, I did the sniff already, so I'm just going to. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Mm. Uh, The glass A is uh, full. It's got a good linger. Right. I'm going to try B now. Okay. Yeah, B B is very sweet. Um, mm-hmm. right, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it right now. I'm going to go with Class A. I just think it's it's got more depth to it. All right, and A was. A is Crown Royal. Except. Wow. So the Crown Royal has moved on. It defeated a very game uh, player in Bren. Yeah. Uh, we all identified features of it that we thought were special and mm-hmm. unique. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, the old master has won the day. Wow. The, the uptick of Crown Royal has, uh, has had enough complexity and flavor to, uh, to defeat the upstart. And once again, the province of Quebec will remain part <laughs> of the country of Canada. That's the most Whew, important part. That was a close one. That was going to be a lot of paperwork. <laughs> I like the uh, the Bren's good. It's but it's very different, and it, it hits your tongue quick with some sweetness, and it just drops off. Right. It's the, a good, the XO seemed to linger very well, and it had a very complex, deep, rich. Yeah. Yeah. Even though I chose Bren, ultimately, I agree with everything you're saying, and I think I'm looking forward to just having Bren as a nice after dinner sipping whiskey. I think that if my palate got used to the Bren, I might right. like that finish more. But it's so different. There's something in the finish I've just never tasted before, and I, yeah. and I don't really like it. Yep. But I can see how other people would like it. Yes. It's not peaty. It's not smoky. It's not anything no. like that. No. It's just a weird flavor that I can't really wrap my mind around. For 100% malted barley whiskey, you don't taste any malt. What do they say about the finish in the, in the write-up? So I, I think if this was the whiskey jugs one, and, and on the finish, he had a lot of oak and dark spice. Okay. So it, it might be... 
be that's what you're kind of the cluing dark into. Spice, the whatever dark, dark spice. spice is. I think it's a little bit of a bitterness to me. It's a dark spice bitterness. Like yeah, I can see that. Yeah. All right, well, Gabe, thanks so much for breaking the tie. Crown Royal moves forward. Yeah. So we'll be right back with uh, Nika Coffee Grain versus Amroot. <laughs> Hey, everybody, we're back after a short break to clean our glasses and wipe our asses. And Wow. I just made that up. But um, we did clean the glasses, though. I did. And, uh, and one of us might have wiped our ass. I'm not sure. But um, we'll cut that out because that's, that's, just, that's just distasteful. I'll come in again. Hey, everybody. This is Ed. We're coming again? We're back from our break. Wow. And um, we're going to do the bottom half of the world bracket. Did you have to say bottom? <laughs> he said bottom. <laughs> We've had a lot. We've had six. Yes. <laughs> Have we? We've had more than that, though. Right. We've had other expressions. We've had six o- official. Outside of the brackets. Anyway, continue. So, yeah. So, in the bottom half of the world bracket, we're going to have Nika Coffee Grain against the Amrit Single Malt Whiskey. And Scott's nice. going to tell us about the top seed in this bracket, the Nika Coffee Grain. Yeah. So, this is a Japanese grain whiskey. It's mash bill. 95% corn. Oh, shit. 5% malted barley. Shut your mouth. Are you it, kidding me? Nope. It's proof is 90. It's age is not disclosed. It's distiller bottler is the Nika Whiskey Distilling Company in Tokyo, Japan. The owner is the Asahi Group. The importer is Anchor Distilling in San Francisco, California. We tasted its fraternal twin, the Nika Coffee Malt, early last summer in episode 26, our Japanese episode with Anders and all the snacks. Oh, all the God, snacks. Yes, the snacks. I wish we had some of them right now. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, but whereas the coffee malt is 100% malted barley, the coffee grain is almost all corn. Mm. In fact, if it had been produced in the United States, it would meet the criteria for a bourbon. Its taste and notes are dark caramel, grains, nuts, spice, and toasted bread. Ed, who's it going up against? Well, the Amrit single malt whiskey from India. It's 100% yeah. malted barley. The proof is 92. What is the uh, Nika? The Nika is 90. Wow, oh, very similar. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. So um, Amrit is a brand of Indian single malt whiskey manufactured by Amrit Distilleries. It is the first single malt whiskey to be made in India. Basically, it translates from the Sanskrit word Amrita, which means nectar of life or drink of the gods. Uh-huh. And the company translates it as elixir of life. Yeah. A little nod to... Jack Daniels and Sinatra, I guess. But, well, actually, because whiskey itself came from right. water of life, and that's what the French call cognac. Right. Eau de vie and whiskey, whatever it was. <laughs> so the original Amber distilleries were founded in 1948. 48? Yeah. Wow. So Scotch whiskey was introduced into the country during the British colonization of 1858 to around 1947. And a year later, with the freedom to do so, the Amber Distillery, private L- limited LTD, was established. So once they got their independence, they started their own whiskey company, which was great. Cool. But India only consumes about 1% of the scotch or so single malt whiskeys. Mm-hmm. At the same time, India whiskey sells very well globally. So basically, Amrit sells better outside of India than in India. Oh, wow. And, um, so India obviously does not have the same climate as Scotland. Much hotter, I would suspect. Right. But that just means it takes less time to produce a single malt. Uh-huh. In fact, the cask of whiskey aging in India for a year is said to be the similar or equivalent of aging in Scotland for three years. Oh. Wow. Cool. Um, of course, the disadvantage of this is that the angel share is much greater. Mm. While in Scotland, you might get 1% to 2% evaporation, it's <laughs> common to have double-digit evaporation Whoa. of barrels of Indian whiskey. Wow. Really cool. Even in Texas, it would only be 6 to 7%. Yeah, yeah. So, hmm. And Kentucky, it's 3 or 4. It's not that big a difference than it is in Scotland. I mean, India is like the latitude. I mean, it's like Southern Mexico or yeah, Central America pot. or something. So for about 50 years, they made kind of blended off of whiskey in India. And then Amrit owners went over to Scotland and studied distillation practices. Oh, very and similar to Japan. Right. Yeah. So instead of importing liquor to India and just bottling it, they started to take Indian malted barley. Okay. And start to distill their own. And they really only started in 2001. Oh, wow. So okay. really recent. Right. It's not that old of an no. expression. The nose is orange, lemon peel. Kind of steal a show with like an almond mazapan. 
Marzipan? Beeps up. What? Marzipan. You yeah. said that hard colored shell candy. That's what the hell crap. I said. He said marzipan. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> do you trust me? I do. So, <laughs> you know, I know you're right. <laughs> so let me just take it easy. So it's orange, lemon, almond, marzipan. <laughs> marzipan. You say it the way you want. No, there's an R in it. I'm pronouncing it the traditional Austrian German version, okay? From my roots. The Indian so, version. Right. Mazapan. Right, right, exactly. All right. Well, all letters <laughs> for the for the the very poor <laughs> Indian accent goes to Whiskey Tangent and Attention that was, Scott. That was bad. So it was bad. Um they said Just actually, say what the taste is. Just they say actually the say Cheerios in the in what? the in the nose. Okay. The whiskey comes off very phenolic. Oh, phenolic. Yeah, like fe- phenol. Wow, that's a fucking stupid fucking tasting right? note. Nobody knows what a phenol is. Right. Fuck that tasting note. Is that like a like a like a hormone? Oh. And then it moves on to smoked beef jerky. The orange from the nose comes onto the palate with a little sweet honey. The dram is woody as it moves mm. to the finish and is reminiscent of black licorice. Uh, the whiskey needs to grow on you a bit, according to this reviewer. Well, that, that's not going to work today, bitch. You got one try. <laughs> you better be pressed right out the gates if you want to make it through to the next round because it's <laughs> going against a really good company in Nika. I've never tried it. We have a, a malted barley versus a corn whiskey. They couldn't be more different. The proof is, is within two. 90 to 92, I that's think. That's with 90 to 92, right. So, uh, like, once again, in the world bracket, we have a matchup of similarly proofed whiskeys made from different grains. Wow. And, you know... Aside from that, honestly, I have nothing else to say because we've never tasted these whiskeys before. I think this might be the first time in podcast history that we're blind tasting two whiskeys that we've never had. Now, I think you're right. Yeah. So uh, even more than has been the case throughout this tournament, it's virtually impossible to predict what's going to happen. Right. Now, I have some uh, definition of phenol. Please. Just to bitch about this for a second because that's a bullshit tasting note. Yeah. Phenol is an aromatic organic compound with a molecular formula of C6H5OH. It is a white crystalline solid that is volatile the molecule consists of a phenol group bonded to a hydroxy group mildly acidic it requires careful handling because it can cause chemical burns how the fuck do you taste that in whiskey how do you how do you put that into a tasting when you don't know what the hell that tastes like bullshit That's where'd stupid. you get that fucking shit from ed justified belligerence phenols are bullshit edition <laughs> philip <laughs> philip scott needs you <laughs> <laughs> or Fred, whoever. I don't know who's my My agent yours. is Fred, yours is Philip. Okay. All right. We gotta get that straight. It's Siobhan, anyway. it's Siobhan's agent, that's a real bitch. Oh wow. Mm. Clara. <laughs> Clara. Fucking Clara. Clara. So, Gabe, have you poured the whiskeys for us? Yes, I have. Oh, All right. thank God. A please. <laughs> Let's get us out of this nonsense. Handing over glass A. Damn. Ooh. Smells like a scotch. Smells like a scotch, so I wonder if that's the amaret. Let me see what else we got. Let me have B before I try this. Okay. Sniff it. That, it. Sniff that it. doesn't smell scotchy. It smells mm, just alcohol, really. Alcohol forwardness? Yeah, l- yeah. I mean, a little bit of sweetness. I mean, a lot like acetone from the B. Wow. Um, is it phenol? It's phenol. Holy. Phenol no, forward. Let's not even stop kidding a minute. Which, which one did you taste? I've tasted both of them. Okay. They are both fucking spectacular uh, wow i mean spectacular i'm this is going to take a minute they're different but they're both amazing are you planning on finishing those mm-hmm. wow that's not surprising again <laughs> wow they're so close stunning stunningly close they're both so good and i've never wow i'm just blown away by this i mean a taste like a scotch it really does b does not taste like a bourbon like no, so if no. if i was thinking b was the nika with the 95 percent corn this does not taste like a 95 percent corn whiskey this has such interesting notes in it this is going to take a bit it's going to this is bit. our last tasting this is going to yeah some, and I, I already drank both of mine and have two new ones <laughs> <laughs> i went through them real quick it's not that i can't tell they're both good i'm not sure which one i like better that's the problem i don't know which one i like better hmm I keep going back to A. Like, I like B. Yeah. I think Ed might need a third tasting of each. <laughs> he's, he's really torn. It, it's a shame someone has to go home a loser today. Yeah. I mean. And we're going to have to throw the bottle out after this is over. <laughs> the bottle gets smashed. It gets thrown out my window, four story, <laughs> onto the pavement below. I can't really uh, get a read in either of you where you're going to head. Mm-mm. I think this is going to be a tie because I have a feeling if I were Ed and knowing his palate, which one that I would take, and I think I'm going to take the other one, but we will see. Waiting on Scott. 
<laughs> Mine's in already. Scott just looked over at it like, no peeking. Stop cheating or you'll stay after class and have to drink more. Scott is handing me. Mm. It's really interested to see how this goes. Yeah, I think it's going to be a tie. I swear. I don't think so. I think we're going to come together on this. Okay. All right. And Gabe? You both chose A. Oh, wow. wow. And A was? Emrut. Wow. Awesome. The, the Indian whiskey has come in. As the is it the fourth seed? Uh, yes. Yes. Oh my wow. god! Every single f- top seed has been upset. So last year, all four number ones made it to the final pour. This, this year, year they, they all, all got won. beat in the first round. <laughs> Unbelievable! Tear seeds. up your brackets. No one's winning. <laughs> no one's winning. If you had this at home in your bracket, if this is what your bracket looks like, then you're doing really well. <laughs> oh shit! To be honest, I, I, Ed, I thought you were going to go with the Nika. I really, did. I did too. It was close. I, I thought you because it's a, a little sweeter. Taste. It's a little smoother. It's what I think you it really was, like. It was the complexity of the finish on the Amrit. It really is just complex. Just by the nose of it, the Nika finishes a little strangely, yes. where the Amrit finishes like a Scotch, and it finishes with that bold, spicy malt flavor, and I just love it. Way better than I expected yeah. the Amrit to perform. Yeah. I, I am. I'm I a little surprised actually. I mean, I nosed the Moth, and I thought the yeah. Amrit had a bit of a little more more sweetness, like. Yeah. You said a scotch nose to it. Gabe, uh, why don't you pour yourself a little yeah, bit yeah, of both? Yeah, try both. Kind of weigh in. Really? Yeah. yeah. I want to see. Can I? Yeah. yeah. Well, and weigh in on what we're opinion. talking what about. Think? The, like, <laughs> honestly, this is most incredible outcome that we've ha- that we ever thought about having. All number ones being upset. That's that's really surprising. Nika Coffee, Knob Creek, the Glen Mirage, and the Colonel E. H. Taylor Bottle and Bond. Right. These are all classic, most popular expressions of the brackets. Gabe is sipping. Which, which one was that one? That's the uh, the, the uh, amaret. It's good, isn't it? Ooh, it's it's alcohol forward heat. Yeah, but, right. But it's, but it's, it's settles to a nice smooth, uh uh-huh. you know, lingering, spicy, the, but it's sweet at the same time. A little cinnamon, a little barley, oh yeah, a little barley so cinnamon. So good. Yeah, breakfast cereal. Yeah, you said it was a there was a Cheerios. Cheerios, Cheerios yes. was the guy. Yeah, yes, okay. <laughs> like like an Odie kind of quality to yeah. it. Yeah, oak, not not Garfield's dog, not Odie. No, oat. <laughs> Oat, oat e, not oat. Tastes like a small canine <laughs> with floppy ears and a dumb expression. Oh, but wow! I know right, the, the Nika's good too. Thank right, you. the Nika comes off it very punches good. Hard in the beginning, bam! But it's also sweeter, smoother, sweeter and smoother. It is. I don't know if it's sweeter. Oh it's no! Got, it's got a more distinctive mm-hmm. spice to it. But now, now that it's sitting for a bit, it's lingering, and it's not that lingering is a bad thing, but sometimes you want it to diminish, and it's like holding on, and it's turning a little bit weird. Yes, and that's exactly what I tasted. The finish is a little strange. I said it previously. And, I mean, I'm not saying on a different day, I might be like, yeah. I, might, I might like the Nika better on a different day, but today, maybe. Yeah, the Amaros definitely got a scotchness to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What I like about scotch is what's in the Amaret. Yeah. It's almost like a like a space side in a way for me. Yeah. Like, and tremendous sweet flavors. Like it's so delicious. It really is. But wow. the, the Nika is, is good in its own way though. It is. Oh, absolutely. It's yeah. uh we'll drink it. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll definitely be drinking that. This it's, will not be thrown out the window under the paper. Okay, open the window. <laughs> Sorry, Nika. It's almost like I wish we almost had like wrestlebacks, like in state tournaments. Like I wish the losers could go. Oh, into, I mean, could go into a loser bracket. So like Lemirage, <laughs> you could go against Nika Coffee, and like the Bren could go against the. We um, could do that as a short yeah, if that, you want to to see how they would compete against each other. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, we're at the end of round one of both brackets. Yeah. Final thoughts on who's going forward. I mean. We have all the number fours going through. We have Corsair. Mm-hmm. We have Evan Williams. We have Sexton. And we have Amrit. All four four seeds are going through. Mm-hmm. So you can be like, well, because you go to the shitty seeders. All right. Well, fuck you then. <laughs> How about this? Oh, wow. How about no? How about this? How about the number one seeds had. They didn't bring it. They had they the bring reputation. They had the sales. They had the history. They had the longevity. They were properly seeded. And according to us, they were upset by the four seeds, which Corsair is a Tennessee craft whiskey that is very hard to find. It's just mm-hmm. starting to come up. Mm-hmm. The Sexton is a new Irish whiskey. The Amrit is from India, everybody, in case you didn't hear that. India, <laughs> that whiskey mecca of the world, which it's not. Mm-hmm. All right. And, and the Evan Williams is, I'm sorry, it's Evan Williams. Okay. That's all I have to say. It's Evan Williams, Bottle and Bond, going against E.H. Taylor. And we are as stunned as you are. That the four seeds have one time after time compared to last year when they all went out early. Yeah. So uh, not only that, but the two seeds 
three out of four times won the bracket. The only two seed that didn't was the Teelings and the Monkey Shoulder beat that one out. So in total, right. we have had five upsets right. in the first round of both brackets. Right. So that's not crazy. I don't know. Five of eight. That is crazy. It is crazy. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little on the border of crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's Just it's, slightly. I'll, rest, I'll restate that. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm already, I'm still stunned by the fours winning. Yes. I mean. I know. That would be, that would be like Ball State taking out Kentucky. Right, Appalachian State taking out Duke. Yeah, like all the number ones knocked out even before we get to the semifinals. Right, an Indian whiskey. First time we ever tried it. Yeah, and we loved it. I can see myself buying Emirate again. People explore the world of whiskeys. I want to see. I definitely want to try their cast strength now. Oh, 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 shit. (laughs) (laughs) Oh yeah. Oh, I'm Trump. (laughs) All right, I think we're. uh, I think this is it. I think that we're done. Uh, Ed, take us out. I mean, holy cow! Five upsets. Great whiskey all around. There wasn't a bad whiskey in the room today. Even the brand, which was different and a little bit of an off-putting finish for me, was still something I'm glad I tried. And Scott and I have very different palettes, which we showed last year. Right. And this year, we're, we're hitting a little bit more closer to home. We really are. We only had two disagreements where uh, last year, 2020, we had six out of eight disagreements. Right. This time was two out of eight. Yeah. And so our bartenders tend to be a lot more sober, but... <laughs> um, and that's so, okay for Gabe because he drank a lot last night. All right. So next week in round two in the bird bracket, we have number four, Evan Williams, Ball and Bond versus number two, Heaven Hill, Ball and Bond. Mm, brothers mm. in arms. Same distillery. The rye bracket, the upstart Corsair dark rye, which I love. Ooh, I had a, a Manhattan in the lounge of the night. Maybe. Oh, Anders made you one? Oh, spectacular oh, with the Corsair. I'm going to make one right now. Yeah. And the Scott's favorite weeded rye, the last feather rye. Which is a two seed. Oh, that's going to be so great. I love both of those I love rye whiskeys. Yeah. It's going to be an amazing battle. In the Scotch Irish bracket, the Sexton, which I will tell you right now, I did not think they were going to be able to. I, love, I didn't either. I love Glamouragi. It's delicious. I thought it had no chance. The Sexton, the four seed, has moved through and will go against the monkey shoulder. Yeah. Uh, I got to tell you, right now I'm feeling Monkey Shoulder is going to win because I loved it so much because I drank that second. But guess what happens when you drink them together? <laughs> it's a whole different world. You never know. And then in the world bracket, the Amrit, the four seed, upsets Nika Coffee Grain against an old favorite, mm. your grandpa's whiskey with a little bit of an XO pump up. Right. The Crown Royal XO. And so all of those will be what you listen to next week. And then the weekend after that will be the final pour. And Gabe, thank you so much for coming out and filling in for Anders, who was not feeling well today. We hope Anders feels better next week. Or he was with the Mars Rover. We're not sure. Shh. Shh. Yeah, well, I mean, I hope Anders feels better, obviously. But I I had a fun time tonight. I enjoyed pouring and watching your reactions to the uh, different head-to-heads. Well, if you're free next week, you're more than welcome to come by. Oh, I can't make that. Forget it. (laughs) I I, I got more things to do. I got more important. I got to paint the shed. I, I might be here. I don't know. All right. I can't wait to see the, the winner of this thing. It's, I know. It's, I mean, it's crazy because right now there's so many like loose cannons running around out there. Like it's like you. a broken arrow. Like there's like nuclear warheads laying around the street. Nobody like, knows. No one knows what's going to happen. So we thank you for tuning in to Whiskey Badness 2021. Tune in next week as we see who progresses further to the final pour for the Whiskey Tangent Podcast. I'm Ed. I'm Scott. I'm Gabe. Thanks again, everybody, and cheers. Later. You ain't gonna make it, you ain't never ever gonna break it You can never beat them and they're better than you face it Thinking that they give a damn, you're not thinking straight kid No, they don't give a damn, you got what I'm saying I'm not fucking playing, I'll give it to you straight man There's too many others and you're not that great man Stop what you're saying, stop what you're making Everybody here knows that you just fake it